Hey folks, welcome back to another What's In There. This is where I uh, take and show you a product and what you're gonna get in the product. It's not really a review. Uh, it's not really giving any type of, um, I guess you could say, uh, uh, opinion on the thing. It's just that I'm showing you what you're gonna get if you choose to go ahead and pick this up or if it's on the way or something like that and kind of, you know, uh, make you a little bit salivate waiting for that to show up in the mail. But what I am showing you today is this one right here, the Drop Zone Issue 1 of Heroes of Black Reach from Devil Pig and Games Workshop. Uh, and it is a game that is based upon the Heroes tactical system that was used for Heroes of Normandy that was put out by Yellow and Devil Pig way back when, one of my favorite tactical two-player uh, World War II games. And so when they when I heard that they were taking that system and applying it to one of my dearest, I guess you could say, uh, miniatures games from my past, and that is Warhammer 40k, I was very, very excited. Well, at the gathering of friends, uh, Stefan from Yellow stopped by and, and gave me a copy, and so I'm showing it to you so that you can kind of get a little bit hyped up, I'm not gonna lie. So let's get down to the table and take a look. So this is what you're going to get in your issue one of Drop Zone from Heroes of Black Reach. It is a uh, new game that is based upon the Heroes system from Heroes of Normandy that was published by uh, Yellow and Devil Pig. So uh, Games Workshop with their Warhammer 40k license has come in and they're collaborating with Devil Pig to create a Heroes of Black Reach. It's kind of like an introductory pack into the game. It's not the full game itself that's coming later on. But you're going to get the introduction to the rules, which also has some stuff. We'll get to that in just a few moments. You get two punch boards that has all of your units and tokens that you'll need for it. You do get a map that is a paper map folded up. Uh, that will be your uh, play surface for the game. And then you also get two 12 card uh, action card decks uh, for each side. One for the ultramarines and one for the orcs. So uh, let's go ahead and get down to the table, take a closer look at some of these components. So the first thing that we have here is the map. It is, of course, made out of paper, so there is that. Uh, but again, this is just supposed to be an introductory thing. If I remember correctly, uh, they were modular boards in Heroes of Normandy, so I'm expecting the same thing with Heroes of Blackreach. Uh, so I, I zoomed up a little bit so you can see the detail of the artwork that's on the board, and then I'm also going to show you uh, some of the other things that are going on as well. Uh, up here is the round marker, uh, where the round marker is going to go, and it will denote whether or not it's an Ultramarine's turn or the Orc's turn, and so forth and so on. Then, you also have one of the coolest things about the Heroes of Normandy system is the fact that all of the terrain effects are actually listed right here on the board, so you don't have to go hunt them down. Uh, basically, what this means is that this is an impassable to these two kinds of units, and these two shields denote light and heavy vehicles. And so, light and heavy vehicles can't pass through this square. Um, infantry, this little blue arrow here, means that it's difficult terrain, so it's a little bit more hard for infantry to come through here. Uh, units that are in here, though, get a, a plus uh, two for uh, being attacked uh, for defense, and then you also have this, which means that it blocks line of sight. So if a person is here and another unit is over here, they can't shoot through. Uh, so that's that. Uh, you have some other things over here. Uh, for example, this symbol right here means that uh, this completely blocks uh, line of sight, and this means, of course, that it is impassable. So it's on the um, uh, intersection of four squares, which means that you can't it, normally, you could move from, for example, uh, you could move from this uh, square to this square, but because this is here, you would not be able to move from here to here. Uh, you also have these other kinds of walls that are denoted here, and uh, they block line of sight. Uh, they are impassable, and uh, they also block uh, indirect uh, fire. So that's interesting. But you can see here that the end of the wall extends into this intersection, which means that you can't move from here to here or vice versa. You also can't move from here to here. You would have to move around. Uh, so it's just stuff like that that is just intuitive on the board and it makes everything just a little bit uh, flow, I guess you could say, a little bit easier. Uh, but that's the map. Drop Zone 1 is also going to be coming with uh, two 12 card action card decks for each side. One for the Orcs, one for the Ultramarine 
screens. And uh, basically it's gonna tell you, of course, when you can play it. This one says play at any time. This one says play this card uh, to alter the result of a die roll. So it has very specific times or events where you can uh, play these different cards and they have two different things that can be used. So for example, you can use it for the battle event, which is down here on the bottom. For example, the courage here says, remove a suppression marker from one of your units uh, this one over here, second chance, says re-roll or make someone re-roll uh, one or more dice and apply the new results. All right, so you can use these cards, uh, as provided you play them at the time that they are de delineated by, for the battle event or for the alternate bonus that is up here. So, for example, this gives you a plus uh, one firing action, and then this one gives you a plus one to a die roll. Uh, so though that's the anatomy of the cards, but uh, let me just go ahead and show you what each card has on it. And uh, it'll be sped up, but uh, you can pause it if you want. And so that gives you an idea of all of the different cards that are going to be coming in your drop zone number one. Let's move on. And so here we have the Ultramarine Force that comes in the issue one of drop zone. And uh, uh, so basically you're first of all going to be getting these are your turn markers. You're going to be able to place these on uh, your units at the beginning of the turn to tell uh, yourself which order they're going to attack in. So those are your order tokens, so to speak, that you're going to be placing uh, on your units. Then, of course, you also have these uh, boards that basically give you your starting force and how much points they cost. So you can kind of tailor make your uh, the size of your scenarios and so forth that you want to play against your opponents. Uh, this is another cool thing about, uh, very much like the map earlier, all of the units uh, necessary information is actually on the token itself. So these are the two tactical squads that are going to come with tactical squad Solanus. Uh, so basically they have a five defense. That's what that middle shield there means. And then against infantry, they get a plus three for their die rolls. Against light vehicles, they get a plus two. And against heavy vehicles, they get a plus zero. So it's just a straight up die roll. This tells you that it is a, an assault squad, so if they are assaulting, they get a plus one to attack. Here, it's a minus two, but they can shoot and fire on the move instead of moving or firing. Uh, this is, so that gives you a basic idea uh, uh, to how simple it is. This is their movement speed down here. This simply means that if they get damaged, then they're going to get flipped. Uh, actually, I had it, uh, yeah, it, it gets flipped like this, and then now that has turned to a red skull, so if they get damaged again, it's going to go away. So you can see the difference here. It has a little flippy icon thing around a white skull on the top side, or the activated side, the unharmed side. This one, those, after they're damaged, if they get damaged again, boom, they're away. All right, so that's the different things that you have available here. Uh, you also have this right here, which tells you that it's a heavy vehicle, and uh, it's, it's a rhino that you can uh, add to uh, your squad up here by simply placing it inside this thing right here. Uh, so it would add 45 points to the total that is there. You can also add heavy weapons or grenades, uh, and, and, and so that's interesting here. They get a plus two against infantry. The Rhino has a seven defense, and uh, it gets plus one against light vehicles. So uh, that, that just gives you just an, a basic idea. You have other things here that this is an effective range for this person's pistol. Uh, you have an effective range over here for the melted gun. Uh, down here, uh, there's heavy weapons that can be added in either a heavy bolter or a missile launcher by using this, and then you can choose which one. And somewhat similarly, we have the orc force that is coming, it's called the Teeth Breakers. And they have a boss mob, uh, the boss. And then they have some sluggers, so there's more boys, and they have uh, this guy, uh, the Teeth Breakers, comes with no less than four shooter groups. So you have the four shooter guys down here. Uh, they're pretty simple. They got three movement, they have a four defense, 
plus one against other infantry when they're fighting, plus one against light infantry, and they cannot attack heavy armored vehicles. Uh, so that's that. They do get a plus two when they are assaulting, though, so that's pretty nasty. If uh, you damage them, they, get, they go down to one. They lose that advantage for light vehicles, uh, and that's probably about it, but... Those are the shooters. The sluggas are a little bit um, weaker, I guess you could say. They have a limited range on their uh, th their uh, shooting, but they do get a plus three for assault. Uh, these statistics are all the same to the shooters as well as their movement. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. These are the different um, order icons or tokens that you're going to be getting for the uh Oryx, so you have the one, two, three, and four there. Uh, so I'll just flip that back over so you can see both sides at the same time. Then you have these different upgrades that you can add to your sets. Uh, you can put a kill -a can in place. A kill -a can moves three, it has eight defense, it's a light vehicle. Uh, and then it gets plus four against other light vehicles, plus three against infantry, and then plus four against heavy vehicles as well. It can shoot on the run, uh, but at a uh, disadvantage of one, it can also uh, assault as well. So that's uh, pretty cool. You have different uh, uh, heavy weapons that you can add. You can add the rocket launcher or the big shooter. And uh, so uh, these are just basically different troops that you can add to uh, this squad that's going to, of course, raise the point total. So 80 points to take four shooters, uh, but you can add a big shooter to it for 30 points more or a rocket launcher for 30 points more. You can add a truck for 30 points, uh, kill a can for 35 points. So um, that's, that's pretty cool. You can add extra ammunition um, and uh, different things. It's basically going to give you a plus one shooting action. You can also add a boss, which will raise the number of action tokens that you can put out on your turn. Uh, the the boss over here can move four. He gets plus two against infantry, plus one against light infantry. He has a six defense. Uh, so he's pretty nasty. And he also gives a star to begin with. And that's, that's where you're going to be coming away with how many actions you're going to be able to give out all these different stars that are on your tokens here. And of course, the boss allows you to give that fourth one out as well. And before we get to the rule book, we're going to sh just show you the r random tokens that come with it. These are suppression markers that have uh, different kinds of things. Whenever a unit uh, that has suppressive fire fires at some at another unit and scores a hit, then they become suppressed. They take minus two movement and minus two to all of their die rolls. Uh, but that can be removed uh, during a certain phase in the game. Here, we have different activated tokens, and of course, they are suppression tokens on the other side, so uh, they're multiple use here. But activated tokens are usually put on to a unit that was not given an order, but was uh, told to do a special kind of action like opportunity fire or something to that effect, just to let you know that that unit did get activated this turn. Uh, so that's what these guys are. And then this is just the turn order marker that I showed you earlier while I was showing you the map. But let's take a look at the uh, rule book. And so here we have the rule book that comes with your drop zone one. Uh, on the back side, I'll just go ahead and show it to you now. You have the orc uh, war boss face there. Uh, but on the front side is the ultramarines. And so as you open it up, it is very uh, beautifully detailed and um, uh, well designed. It is not something that is going to be. Um, easily or slipshod put together. Uh, and then you have, of course, the ready action where it just basically jumps right into the rules and how to uh, play everything, just just, just uh, describing all of the different things that you can do, uh, unit actions and uh, de de describing the different icons on each of the different uh, uh, units and so forth and so on. It goes through all of the different phases as well, talks about the battlefield and uh, units and their abilities all of this kind of stuff as well. So it really does a good job of just giving you a primer back into, or even just a, a first foray into the hero's uh, system. Talks about action cards, effect markers, uh, the different recruitment rules that you have to abide by when you uh, build your force uh, and all that kind of stuff. And then it also gives a first contact. So it gives you the first few, this is the scenario that you can play through deployment zones here 
and uh, then you have other deployment zones over here for the ultramarines uh, and it even tells you exactly who is where uh, over here on the side so this is the scenario that it asks you to go to victory conditions are down here uh, the different scenario rules of course so it gives you everything that you need to enjoy your first battle then it actually even takes you through some sample turns as well uh, through that scenario so you can kind of get the flow of the game before you actually give uh, a shot at, at, at playing it and then of course there's your obligation obligatory um, what's coming next type of stuff uh, down the road so different kinds of storage solutions and uh, the different uh, reinforcement packs that are going to be for the ultramarines and the orcs so that's it for what you get in drop zone one for heroes of black reach coming out very soon from uh, games workshop and uh, devil pig so uh, I, I really think that this is a great little step into it's a, it's a great uh, product i think to just give you an introduction to the game without having having to go full bore into the core box. I do like that a lot. I think it's great. I think that uh, people who get this are going to get excited about the game that's coming out later on. So uh, hopefully that uh, this will, will do its job and, and provide a little bit more buzz uh, for the game. Uh, I think... Uh, th now, there's one small thing that was a slight disappointment. It didn't come with any dice. Now, I'm not really worried about it. If it was a core box, I would have definitely mentioned it, and I definitely would not have been happy about it. But because of the the introductory nature, people are, I guess they're just assuming that you've got a couple dice laying around that you can use uh, for attacks and, and saving throws and all that kind of stuff. So uh, there is that. It doesn't come with any dice, but that's really the only minor uh, quibble of a disappointment that I had with the game. I'm, I'm really excited to get this to the table and give it a try but hey now you know what comes in the drop zone one thanks for watching we'll see you guys on the flip side